When God summoned Ezekiel to be prophet, he was a young priest living in exile in Babylon. This was a major change. A priest's responsibility was to go before God on behalf of the people. Priests have a difficult but relatively simple job. Prophets had a considerably more challenging task. A prophet went to the people on behalf of God. His responsibility was to say, Thus says the Lord. As a prophet stood before the people and declared God's judgments, he also had to show that what God was doing was righteous and just. His goal was to encourage the people and offer them a message of hope if they were prepared to listen to his word from the Lord. This was the task God assigned to Ezekiel. Ezekiel saw visions of God and the word of the Lord came directly to him. What he saw was astounding. His ministry was under divine mandate and authority. Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 3 through 28, New King James Version. The word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar. And the hand of the Lord was upon him there. Then I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it and radiating out of its mist like the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Each one had four faces, and each one had four wings. Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the soles of calves' feet. They sparkled like the color of burnished bronze. The hands of a man were under their wings on their four sides, and each of the four had faces and wings. Their wings touched one another. The creatures did not turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. And each of the four had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces. Their wings stretched upward. Two wings of each one touched one another, and two covered their bodies. And each one went straight forward. They went wherever the Spirit wanted to go, and they did not turn when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures. The fire was bright, and out of the fire went lightning, and the living creatures ran back and forth in appearance like a flash of lightning. Now as I was looking at the living creatures, behold, a wheel was on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces. The appearance of the wheels in their workings was like the color of beryl, and all four had the same likeness. The appearance of their workings was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they moved, they went toward any one of four directions. They did not turn aside when they went. As for their rims, they were so high, they were awesome and their rims were full of eyes all around the four of them. When the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them, and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Wherever the Spirit wanted to go, they went, because there the Spirit went, and the wheels were lifted together with them, for the Spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. The likeness of the firmament above the heads of the living creatures was like the color of an awesome crystal stretching out over their heads. And under the firmament, their wings spread out straight one toward another. Each one had two which covered one side, and each one had two which covered the other side of the body. When they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of many waters, like the voice of the Almighty, a tumult like the noise of an army. And when they stood still, they let down their wings. A voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. Whenever they stood, they let down their wings. And above the firmament over their heads was the likeness of a throne, in appearance like a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. Also from the appearance of his waist and upward, I saw, as it were, the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, 
as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Ezekiel was not sent in his own strength. He was to be a prophet in the Lord's might, since his name meant God strengthens. Ezekiel would be enlightened by the word of God and empowered by the Lord's hand. The Lord also showed Ezekiel a vision of his splendor to better prepare him for his mission. Several parts of Ezekiel's prophetic ministry are relevant to our lives today. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, New King James Version. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. Remember, God had just shown Ezekiel a glimpse of his splendor, which ended in Ezekiel falling on his face. Now the Lord not only instructed him to rise, but his spirit entered him and placed Ezekiel on his feet. Ezekiel was given his call. The Lord called him Son of Man over 90 times in the book. In the New Testament, Jesus was also referred to as the Son of Man. This phrase in Ezekiel emphasizes the prophet's humanity with frailty. But when Jesus was called the Son of Man, the emphasis was on humanity with deity, Christ who is God manifesting himself in human form. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, New King James Version. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. Ezekiel was summoned to preach to the exiled Israelites in Babylon. Their captivity had not resulted in repentance. God described Ezekiel's audience as rebellious, a Hebrew word that refers to Gentiles, who were seen as the ultimate rebels. God is sending Ezekiel to the people of God who were living as pagans. We witness the same thing today when those who profess the name of Jesus Christ act more like the lost world than their Lord and Savior. The Lord then became more intense in his portrayal of the people, adding that they were hard on the exterior because they were hard on the inside. Our outside conduct reflects what is going on in our hearts. Ezekiel would never have to ponder what he should teach. He merely had to share thus says the Lord God, faithfully. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 11, New King James Version. And go, get to the captives, to the children of your people, and speak to them and tell them, thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 5, New King James Version. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. What would be the outcomes? God provided Ezekiel no guarantee that the people would hear this message, but he informed him that whether the people listened or not, they would not be able to claim ignorance about what the Lord intended them to know. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, New King James Version. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, Though briars and thorns are with you and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words or dismayed by their looks, though they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. The Lord then plainly revealed to Ezekiel that he would require courage. Ezekiel's audience would reply to his preaching with painful insults and threats much like thorns, briars, and scorpions. God knew this, and he wanted Ezekiel not to be fearful or disheartened. Ezekiel's ministry paralleled Paul's experience in the city of Corinth. After being resisted by the Jews, Paul saw a vision from the Lord God in which he delivered words of encouragement to calm Paul's concerns. Acts chapter 18, verses 9 and 10, New King James Version. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you. And no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 7, New King James Version. 
You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. The Lord emphasized Ezekiel's role once again. The temptation now is for preachers and instructors to water down the message because people do not want to hear the reality of God's word. Instead, they must follow Ezekiel's example and speak God's words to them, whether they hear or refuse. While Ezekiel may not have committed the same crimes as the people, he would be in rebellion against the Lord if he did not preach God's message. Instead, he needed to be God's prophet and preacher. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 8-10, through 10, New King James Version But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Now when I looked up, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. God told Ezekiel to eat what he would give him. Books in those days were actually scrolls. God unrolled the scroll, which was filled with writing. This might very possibly be a reference to the book of Ezekiel, which is replete with lamentations, grief, and suffering. Eating a scroll or a book is only a metaphor of speech. We still use the same phrase when we talk about digesting study materials or devouring a good book. Again, Ezekiel's figure of praise refers to taking things in and assimilating it into oneself. This is exactly what the Lord desired Ezekiel to achieve with his words. How could a book full of weeping, mourning, and woe be pleasant to Ezekiel's taste? The message wasn't pleasant, but the sweetness came from Ezekiel's willingness to be faithful and obedient, to accept and deliver the words that God would send him. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, New King James Version. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find, eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly, and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate, and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. Remember, it's our job to be faithful in sharing God's words with a lost and dying world. Whether people respond to our message with thorns and scorpions, let us resolve to stay steadfast so that one day we might hear, Well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, New King James Version. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord.